Welcome to this continuing series from Morgan Reed. Ready for this? You ready for this? This is a dramatic story of the rescue of Jews from Europe after World War II by North American Jewish volunteers. These men and ships smashed through the British blockade and brought thousands of refugees to safety and safe haven in Palestine. Murray Greenfield, Friday. born and raised in New York City, served in the Merchant Marines during World War II. I'd like you to join us. I'd like you to be part of a crew. We're trying to put crews together, and we're not sure if what we're doing is legal or illegal. But we're buying old vessels here, and really they were old. After World War II, these things were terrible. And I'd like you to join. I said, sounds good. It's just that, you know, it could take a year. You may go to jail. I can't tell you what will happen because we don't know what happens. When they, the British catch these ships and they do all kinds of things. Prison. I said, all right. Okay, now you told me, what do you get paid for the deal? There's no money, you don't get paid. I said, no. <laughs> then I was a hero. Then I said, Gee, if there's nobody, if they're not paying, I gotta go. Who the hell's gonna go if they're not gonna? Okay. Good enough. But I have a problem, I go home, and I gotta tell my mother I'm not gonna go to college. It's a furious problem. You know, a Jewish kid telling his mother's not gonna go to college. I think it was easier for him to marry a shiksa than not go to college. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> This is a no-holds-barred reality check on how the British, with Arab oil on their minds, did all they could to keep the Jewish birthright people from entering Palestine, the Jewish homeland. Ten American-purchased and American-manned vessels sailed from Ali Bet from 1946 through January 1, 1948. The American vessels did not begin operating from Europe until more than a year after the surrender of the Nazis. Four of the American vessels ultimately became Israel's first Navy warships. To put things into perspective, there was no Red Cross for them. There was no Amnesty International. There was no Human Rights Watch. There was no United Nations High Commission on Human Rights. There was no one for the Jews of Europe in 1945. Only the remnants of a nation that Hitler and his European collaborators tried to wipe out. This is a short video segment that tells the true story of the brutal and fascist campaign by the British imperialists to keep the Jews from immigrating to Palestine after their lives had been destroyed in a Europe that pretended to be tolerant. It was thousands of very real people whose families were destroyed and who only wanted a country where they could live free from European hate. With the end of the war in Europe on the 8th of May, 1945, Jews all over the world hoped and expected the doors of Palestine would be open for survivors of the Holocaust. The number of people involved was not much more than 150,000. Their suffering had been terrible and their survival a little short of miraculous. Jews therefore wished to live in dignity, protected by their own people and not dependent on the approval or sufferance of any non-Jewish majority. After the war, the British published a document called the White Paper Policy. Nearly 100,000 Jews moved through Europe during 1945 in search of routes, ports, and ships for Palestine. By the end of the year, only 13,000 had been allowed by the British to enter. This was 1,500 less than had been allowed during 1944. A struggle now began in Palestine and in Europe between the British government and the Jews a struggle marked by increasing bitterness and extremism on both sides. The British determined to halt the now swelling tide of illegal immigration from liberated Europe to Palestine went so far as to return captured immigrants from the waters of the eastern Mediterranean to which they sailed to the displacement camps in Germany from which they fled. The British troops halted concentration camp survivors who were on their way to Palestine and held them in former prisoner of war camps. The success of this initiative was modest when measured in the terms of the numbers who succeeded in entering Palestine, but it proved to be a unifying force between the Jewish community in Palestine and for the Holocaust survivor refugees in Europe. If you'd like to learn more about these important concepts or any other issues that we've covered on today's show, log on to www.morganrees.com. That's morganrees.com. Thanks for listening.